So we are jumping to the next session, which is presented by Johannes Sommer. Johannes Sommer is the CEO of Retresco, and he's talking about national language generation. His, his presentation has the title, From Data to Insights, How Enterprises Understand the Story Behind the Data with Natural Language Generation. The floor is yours, Mr. Sommer. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to present here today. My name is Johannes Sommer. I'm, um, as already said, the managing director of Retresco. Um, we are a software development company in the field of natural language processing. Um, we are founded in 2008 and ever since located in Berlin. Today, um, I will talk about why the use of natural language generation in the context of big data projects is essential for the business success of companies in the future. So um, let's get started with a little intro by looking at the recent storytelling concerning, concerning the big data topic. Um, as you all know, over the last 15 years, there has been a realization that data will change the way we do business. As early as 2010, the Financial Times noted the importance of analyzing real-time data in addition to collecting historical transaction-based data and how much resources leading companies invest in data management in order to make much better and informed decisions. Um, the image of data as the new oil has taken hold. And today, no one of us here doubts that big data will open up new dimensions in knowledge transfer, in decision-making, and solving all kinds of societal and business problems. The, the proof is that the business models of today's most valuable companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and so on, are based on data, and that we now generate 2.5 quintillion bytes of data worldwide every day. So let's be honest, you probably all know this number, but it is a completely intangible figure. Yet 90% of the data that is generated is still unstructured. So it comes from emails, from Twitter and Facebook posts, from chat requests, telephone recordings, or from videos. And in addition to all that, there are countless data generated daily by machines. So we produce a massive amount of data by the software we develop and build up enormous costs. Because all this information is useless unless it is processed in order to make it make its content useful for business. And again, let's face it, how many successful big data projects do each of you have? And how much effort has already been invested in it? Dr. Varian from Google um, already put it in a nutshell in 2009 in a very impressive interview. He says that. The challenge is to understand, process, visualize, and communicate data in order to create value from it. So the question is, how do we connect the dots? To make the sheer volume of data manageable, companies today are building huge enterprise data warehouses, and they are investing heavily in hardware. To manage all that, we have new roles have emerged in companies, such as data analysts, solution architects, big data, data integration engineers, or data strategists. And above all, it needs business intelligence, which is applied in data processing and data analysis in order to make the masses of data we collect usable. There are countless um, uh, valuable vendors and BI solutions, such as uh, Tableau, Power BI, uh, Click, and all the others. Um, but looking at this slide, here too, the question may be asked. Who, apart from the expert just mentioned, uses DBI solutions today? Who, apart from a few experts in your companies, is able to understand the machine-generated analysis today? In business processes that are critical to companies, there are a large number of stakeholders with different requirements, with a wide variety of sometimes contradictory information needs, and with diverse knowledge backgrounds. Do these colleagues really understand what this kinds of visualization of data analysis is all about? To use Dr. Varian's words again, besides all the other points he mentions, communication is needed to extract value from the big data. And communication needs natural language because language is the fundamental layer of human interaction. 
If we now consider that almost every business model, every business relevant process is based at various points on human interaction and those on language, then the importance of the use of natural language processing becomes apparent. There's much evidence to suggest that a large proportion of interaction based on written or spoken communication between machine and human, human and machine, but also between machine and machine, will in the future become increasingly analyzable and automatable by the use of um, NLP. <laughs> there are some impressive indicators that we at Retresco are not the only one uh, who assign NLP such an enormous impact. Almost all large companies are investing heavily in their own NLP stack, as there are GPT-3 from OpenAI, BERT from Google, Turing NLG from Microsoft, etc. This also can be clearly seen in the number of publications at the most important NLP conference. It's the ACL. In 2020, 165 of the 780 papers published were submitted by teams from Microsoft, Facebook, Google, IBM, Amazon, and Salesforce. These companies invest so heavily in NLP because NLP is the essential driver for any kind of machine-to-human or human-to-machine communication. So back to the question, back to the question, are these, are there any successful data projects? And the answer is yes, there are already many examples of successful data projects using energy to communicate data insights. And to make it more tangible, let me introduce you to some of them. Um, based on natural language generation technology, the German Football Association generates automatic football reports for all matches in non-professional football across all leagues in women, men, youth, and senior football. Counting pre- and post-reports, this comes up to the impressive amount of 124,000 reports every week. So let me take this example to shortly explain to you how energy works. In German football, every referee sends match reports data to the Football Association right after the end of the match. In professional football, data vendors even constantly collect data and transmit data during the match at any time. This data is sent via API to, a, to, to the text engine, which analyzes the data and extracts the relevant information. So, for example, who scored a goal and when, who was substituted, and who was dismissed from the game with a red card. This real actual game-specific data is enriched with historical data, such as that one of the teams is the current champion or has the top scorer in its own ranks. And based on this information, the engine then generates all kinds of different text types, such as match previews, match reports, player portraits, or social media snippets, depending on the use case and the customer. In professional football, if desired, with a high level of narrative design uh, detail based on the detailed data, and in different languages and in real time as soon as the data is available. So knowing that, let's go on and have a short look on other successful examples from different industries where natural language generation um, is in use. The Commerzbank. The Commerzbank automated the whole process of creating reference letters based on energy, starting with the automated extraction of relevant employee data from different databases, ending in the automation, uh, in the automated generation of the fully legal, compliant, and correct reference letter. The Deutsche Telekom uses NAG technology on their voice platforms and make world and open domain knowledge accessible for users of their Hallo Magenta speaker. The real estate platform Immobilien Scout 24 generates expose texts in real time just as the user enter the properties and features of their flats and houses. In, ad in addition to the user's input data, they also use geodata from third-party databases to comprehensively describe not only the property itself, but also its surroundings. And approximately 75% of these automated text suggestions are accepted as is or only marginally changed by the users. The multinational consumer electronic retail chain MediaMarkt Zaton creates descriptions for more than 240,000 of their products across almost all product range types in unique versions on two different platforms. And 
Last but not least, energy is increasingly being integrated into BI solutions in order to create relevant business reports for various stakeholders in real time. So as you can, as you can see, there are many existing use cases with an enormous business potential in very different business areas. In the following, I'm going to point out the main five values which energy already makes possible today um, and as shown in the previous examples. So again, energy is able to be the key element in any data to insights process as the optimal interface between people and data. It creates easy to understand reports from complex data, even in multiple languages if required. The technology complements smart data visualization with easy to understand reports to better understand dashboards. With NIG, users can create customized reports with just a few clicks. So energy enables users with different competencies to find answers to individual questions in their data. With energy, decisions can be made database, informed, and fast. That means that the risk of making wrong decisions due to misinformation can be significantly reduced by using that. And evaluate data, interpret information, and create large volumes of reports at the push of a button. Tasks for which business analysts and also the viewers spend a lot of time can be scaled in a time and cost-saving way. So these are the advantages of energy already. And so, of course, the question is, what's coming up? So what's the next step in development? And close to this question, there's always the question, will energy be able to be creative? And probably the answer to this question is yes, it will. Right now, a whole bunch of energy vendors develop solutions to ease up the access to get energy into use. Language models such as GPT-3 from OpenAI enable the fully automatic creation of text based on minimum human input. We are ourselves developing solutions in which the software independently makes suggestions for the formulation of texts. So these are very exciting times and we are still at the beginning of NLP and NHG development. So we as Retresco strongly believe that in the near future, almost every company in the world will sooner or later use energy technology to optimize their business processes based on data, consciously or unconsciously. So that's already it. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm really looking forward to your questions. Perfect. Thanks a lot for this very interesting insights and what uh, you are doing with your customers. I've maybe one, not, more, not a question, like more a, um, a vision I would like you to present when it comes to a roadmap. You just said like energy and LP is just in the beginning. Big tech is investing a lot. Um, like f um, companies like Atresco are doing a lot uh, too in this field. So what do you see for the next five, the next 10 years in the field of energy? What kind of things will we see? What kind of other processes um, will be automated or automatically be generated by energy in the future? Well, I think the question now is, at the moment, it is still, as I try to, to say, it is, it is, you still need a project to set up a new energy project. So you have to understand what is the data and what is the purpose to analyze it and what, it's, what, what is to tell about it. So you have to prepare um, and, and have um, some experts in place um, to set a project up. And I think the next evolution is to, to ease up um, the usage. So to make it possible that no matter what kind of data you have as input and what kind of insights you need to generate, that you just can, um, uh, so you can reduce the human um, need of input at the beginning to get out the right results. So it will be, let's say it easy, it will be kind of, more intelligence be, be able analyzing data or will be, there will be more content models, text models to ease up the analysis, analysis and, and texting um, um, based on data. Thanks a lot for the insights uh, regarding this vision. We have one question in the chat regarding GDPR. Uh, there's someone asking, GDPR national language generation. So if you can 
share your considerations regarding this or your experiences within projects regarding interaction with GDPR? Um, well, there is um, um, not that issue really. Um, so uh, if, if you are in a GBTR critical context, then mainly you make a real rule-based approach. So you, or we make a rule-based rule approach so um, you can consider all the rules um, and, 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 and teach it to the, to the engine so you will not be in trouble with, with GBTR. So you can in advance um, 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 take this into consideration when set up a project. So this will not, this is not a, um, um, a barrier at the moment, as we can reflect it and interact um, to, yeah, to reflect it. So it's not not a not a, a some sort of border to set up a project. Thanks a lot, and thanks a lot also for your for your presentation. And feel free to connect to um, to. To, to Retresco in advance in, after this, after this um, presentation on our platform and also via social media and um, afterwards. Thanks a lot for your presentation and uh, enjoy the, uh, the rest of the Big Data AI Summit.